All right, guys, so today we're going to be talking once again about cubes, and we're also taking another look at this beautiful X220 tablet, which has cubes, core boot, Intel management engine neuter. Something, by the way, I do offer as a service, and actually someone approached me to acquire this model specifically to support the blog and channel. So if you're interested in something like that, you can always reach out to me. But let's go ahead and get into it. Let's talk about getting this touch screen to work. That's the subject of the video today. I wanna go over two different approaches here. So approach one involves getting permission every time that you get access to the touch screen. For this case, as we know, Cubes isolates each piece of hardware for security purposes. And you never know how a piece of hardware may be able to be leveraged for abuse or privilege escalation of some sort. And for that reason, Cubes isolates every piece of hardware. And you have to individually give it permission. So as you can see, the touchscreen does work. And as you can see, it performs rather well on this X220. Now, as some people have asked, not all X220s are going to be Cubes compatible. So regardless of whatever model you're installing Cubes on, ensure you look up the system requirements and find out that it is something that you can actually run on your computer. Because if you don't have the right virtualization, etc., you're going to have an issue installing or actually taking advantage of all the security enhancements that come on Cubes. So let's go ahead and get into it and talk about how you would get a touch screen working on Cubes for our example. So in this particular example, when I installed Cubes on this, the touch screen did not work whatsoever. There was no response at all. Like for example, if I were to go like this, you know, the mouse would not move. You could though use this mouse. You could also use the track point. So that all worked out of the box for my particular setup, which has core boot and some other setups. But on the configuration end, you'll need to allow the tablet touch screen. So we can actually drop down this menu here. And, you know, these are a little different, like it's a different era. So we're so used to the super sensitive smartphone screens nowadays. So you do have to kind of, you don't have to put pressure on it, but it's not quite as sensitive as say, a uh, smartphone, but it works very well. And I really enjoy using the touch screen on cubes and I've never seen a cubes tablet. So I think it's a pretty neat item to have. And I'm really excited to get this to the follower who had ordered it from me. And uh, I'm excited for them to get a chance to check it out for themselves. What you'll want to do if you want to get a touch screen working or another piece of hardware, this could be another USB device of sorts. Uh, you would go into, let's take a little closer look. So I've gone into the configuration directory for this. First thing you'll want to do though, is go up here. You'll want to then open the terminal emulator here. Now, if I were to open the terminal emulator here, I would open it in the Fedora virtual machine. That's not what we're trying to do today. Because we want it to work system wide, we need to ensure we open it on the DMO zero virtual machine. By doing something in configuration on DOM zero, you're able to carry that over into the other virtual machines. And so what I did was I hit that terminal emulator, open that, and we have it actually right here. So if I take this and show you some of these commands I typed in just for a reference for you guys, I went into the etc cubes dash RPC directory. And from there, I went into the policy directory. And within that, you'll see various files here that have access controls. Now, the one in touch screens, you're gonna wanna configure, and you may actually need to get the right firmware beforehand. So if it doesn't have the firmware for your touch screen, that's something you're gonna wanna get first before going through any of this. In this particular case, the cubes input tablet is the configuration file we needed to edit. And from here, I have two different examples. So as you can see, there's hashed out two different lines. So if I were to unhash those and instead hash out this one, the allow one at the very bottom, 
Uh, if I hashed out that one and allowed those, it would ask for permission at each boot. And that I didn't want to go with, but some people's situations, they may want that piece of hardware they're configuring to need the explicit permission from the person who was logged in. And in that case, you would want to unhash out those lines. And I'll, I'll copy and paste these examples on the blog. So make sure to follow the blog. It's at bmc.link slash politictech. And if you follow there, it's free to follow. And of course, this video is going to be on there. And actually, I do share videos there early. So if you're interested in seeing the videos before they hit the channel, go ahead and follow the blog. It's free to follow and you can check everything out there. In this particular case, if I go to this line down here, this line allows it to start right away. And these lines have a hash mark in front of them, meaning they do not run. They are not read. So those are the ones that you would use if you wanted it to enforce permission before the touch screen would work. I hope this isn't confusing anyone, but I'll, I'll try to make it a little more clear on the blog. But I did want to do a little bit of a video example just to show that the touch screen does in fact work. And if you do this properly, you'll have a working touch screen on your Cube's laptop as well. So I thought it would be, you know, something nice to share with everyone, some of the process. Yeah, so what you'll want to do is if you want it to just work right out of the box, just use that bottom line and add that to your cubes input tablet file and then once you reboot it should work right out of the box you want to ensure you're doing this inside the dom0 virtual machine if you do it on another one it's not going to have the same effect system wide and if you want to be able to use that touch screen system wide you're going to ensure that you do your configurations on the dom0 virtual machine and that goes for everything. So anything you want to apply system-wide, whether it's recording something or otherwise, you will want to ensure you do it on the DOM0 virtual machine. And then you can set that policy in there. So I hope this was clear. And if not, make sure to check out the blog. I'll put some pictures and everything up for you. And uh, make sure to share the video, like it, and subscribe. I really appreciate you guys who are liking these videos, commenting, you know, your support means a lot. And if you ever want to buy me a coffee, you can buy me one at bmc.link slash politictech. But of course, what I appreciate most is people who take the time to share these videos, like these videos, and subscribe because that really helps the channel out and helps the algorithm. So thanks so much for watching, guys. And if you are confused by this, check out the blog at bmc.link slash politictech. And I'll be back later with more on how to protect your security and privacy.